Hi, this is the first video in our uh, discussion on financial reporting and analysis under Unit 1. And in this video, we are basically going to start with the concept of financial accounting and what is the introduction to that? What's the definition to that? What are the key parts to the financial accounting uh, puzzle? What are all the major financial statements that exist for uh, for any business? And how do we go about really interpreting those statements? What is the importance of those statements, right? This uh, unit one would get divided into multiple parts and across the spectrum of unit one, we're going to cover these uh, broad areas, which are going to be the broad definition and need of accounting. Understanding of how every activity in a firm is divided into three parts, which is three different activities. Uh, generally accepted accounting principles principles and then the three financial statements that we're going to look at are balance sheet income statement and cash flow statement obviously all of this is going to cover uh, get covered over a series of videos and not necessarily this only this video we're going to start with basically an understanding on what is accounting and what is the idea of financial accounting right now accounting is the process of identifying gathering measuring and communicating financial information about a company's operations, right? So identifying, gathering, measuring, and communicating information. The information is typically financial in nature. It's essential to business decision making and monitoring of the activities of businesses. Now, there are two main purposes of financial accounting. The first one is to report the financial position of a company. And the second one is once you have reported the position, you can compare the performance or assess the performance of the company with a weird defined period, right? Now, the most common measurement of performance is profit of the company. We will define these terms as we go along, but typically a business will sell something. There will be a cost in terms of uh, those sales. So you do some sales, you subtract some costs, and what you get is profit right the accounting statement is going to tell us about whether a business is making money or not making money it tells what is the financial position of a company at any given point of time it also tells us that if today this is the financial position and tomorrow the financial position changes what is the change right so we can compare the change across different periods that's the other idea or the main purposes of accounting statements and what what do we mean by accounting as we go along we will learn in detail as to how do we go about doing this in actual sense but uh, primarily this is what accounting means to us now when we look at the concept of accounting year right when we said we are looking at data for a particular period this period could be monthly, it could be quarterly, quarterly meaning three months, it could be half yearly, six months or annual, which is 12 months, right? There is a term that is used for a financial year. A financial year is any 12 month period used for accounting. Typically, you consider what has been the performance of the company over 12 months. That is what is called as the financial year. Now, this may not coincide with the calendar year. In fact, in most of the cases in the context of India, we have April 1st of a particular year to March 31st of the next year as the accounting period. So you have April, May, June. This is considered as quarter one. July, August, September. This is considered as quarter two. October, November, December. This is considered as quarter three and January, February, March, this is considered as quarter four in the context of India's financial year, right? Now, when you look at a financial year in India and someone says financial year 2016, this means you are starting from April of 2015 and this is going on till March of 2016, right? So when you say financial year 2016, this 2016 means where you are ending the year right so q1 financial year 2016 right i can also write this as q1 fy2016 that is going to be april to june 2015 
and so on and so forth. You could you could keep expanding this, and this is Q1, this is Q2 FY 2016, Q3 FY 2016, and Q4 FY 2016. These 12 months typically is what most companies in India follow as the accounting year. We need to understand that different countries follow different financial year periods, right? So US, for example, treats the accounting year as the same as the calendar year. So they will start from January and they will go till December. This is in the US and a lot of the Western nations follow that method. India basically follows April to March. So that's the context of the accounting year. Everything that happens in this year will form a part of the accounting statements for that financial year, right? Now let's understand the different financial statements that we have. There are three broad financial statements that are available and we will look at them in much more detail as we go along. But the first one is something called as the profit and loss statement, also called as the income statement, right? What does it tell you? It tells you what do you earn through business? So if it is a company that manufactures cars, what do you earn by selling cars known as essentially what your income is in other words this is what your revenue or what your sales is right that's what a company earns through business that's what it is called as so what you sell in the business is your revenue or sales so if i sell 100 cars what i make by selling those 100 cars is going to be my revenue uh, the expenses are anything that is considered as a cost. So the metal, the rubber, the tires, etc., that go in producing that car is all the expenses. The difference of these two is going to give me my profitability or my profits, right? That's my profit and loss statement. Uh, then sometimes the profit may not be exactly the same as the cash that comes into the system, right? To understand the cash that comes into the system, we use something called as the cash flow statement where any money in cash terms flowing into the company is called an inflow any money in cash terms that is going outside the company is called as an outflow right we will look at more details as to how does the how does this add value to our overall analysis at a subsequent point of time but broadly that's the contour of uh, of the cash flow statement the next one that comes into picture is something called as the balance sheet which is probably one of the most important statements that is there uh, the balance sheet basically tells me what do I owe to someone versus what do I own, right? My raise, raising of money, where have I taken my money from? These are all my liabilities. These are obligations that I've taken money from someone to run the business, right? So I have to repay this money to, to those people for the funds, the goods or services that I have procured. And then once I get this money, I use this money in terms of buying resources these resources could be tangible tangible meaning physical that we can touch and feel something like a building or raw material etc or intangible intangible could be things like licenses right i can go and buy a license for running a radio station in india and that's a license these parts are known as assets in other words you owe your liabilities and you own your assets and that's the construct of what is the balance sheet about. Now we will look at more details about how these three become important and what is the linkage of these three in due course of time. But that's the broad spectrum of three financial statements and all three of them give us a different kind of picture of what is happening about the business. You cannot say looking at only one or you cannot comment definitively looking at only one of these statements about the financial health of the company. To get to the crux of what is the financial statement and financial health of the company, you have to look at all three of them in one shot, right? That's the three financial statements. We're going to look at them in more detail. The next bit that comes in is in terms of reporting standards. Now, when you're looking at uh, creating financial information, understand that all companies can follow different kind of premises. It's not necessary that all companies come and say that I record sales the same way. Someone might say that, you know, when I sell 100 cars only, then I book the sales. Someone might say that when I sell one car, I will book the sale then, right? So it is important to have some sort of a framework, right? Some set of rules 
and basic set of uh, you know you know principles that everyone follows while preparing an accounting information why is this important is because only then can you compare if two companies give completely different sets of data how are you going to compare them right so preparation of the accounting information and its presentation on the financial statements is guided by what is known as gap or generally accepted accounting principles right these principles are basically going to uh, create a set of framework or rules that allow that you can make all companies so all companies will follow this right when all companies follow this then they are being governed by a set of rule that okay this is revenue this is cash flow this is asset this is liability and then you can compare the companies right now this gap is typically provided by the geography in which the company is incorporated so india for example provides what is called as indian gap us provides what is called as us generally accepted accounting principles right we'll come to a problem in that in a moment in terms of different geographies giving different data sets but broadly there is going to be a framework or a rule that is going to get this creation done right adherence to gap makes financial statements of a company comparable with other companies in the same geography so all companies in india will follow a similar set of reporting standards and what that does is that basically ensures that companies can be compared against each other now gap is not a single accounting rule it's an aggregate of many rules that you know that would account for various transactions so there is a set of a rule book that will come up and it's a it's an aggregate of a lot of rules it's not just one two three rules that are there there is going to be a set of principles and typically a lot of the accountants are the guys who are specialist in in kind of establishing these rules and helping companies follow these rules right that's the reporting standards gap now what is the broad qualitative characteristic of gap and why is it important right there are four principal qualitative characteristics that make the financial information relevant and useful and from that perspective it is important for us to look at these four uh, four principles the first one is understandability making statements simple to understand right you can't use cryptic language you can't use random uh, data points sales is sales for all companies costs are costs for all companies you can't use your own jargon in that uh, in that setup the second is to make statements relevant to the to the stakeholders who are looking at using this uh, those statements so by making them simple to understand and by causing firms to essentially put uh, put uh, accounting into uh, a specific set of rules this uh, these statements become relevant for all the stakeholders who can then view them with that understanding that okay this is the framework and it is same across the companies right then the statements become reliable because there is a set of rules that are governed and that's the same for all right so they are kind of reliable in that context there is a faithful representation that is going to happen there is going to be substance in the statements that is going to come in statements are created from a neutrality perspective it's neutral it is not biased it is not going to be beneficial for someone and not beneficial for someone else uh, the principles are primarily neutral in nature and when you combine those neutral principles it gives a better representation of the data it follows what is called as the principle of prudence prudence would typically mean that you are a little bit conservative in your accounting and your gap basically says that you continue to be conservative in the accounting you don't become too too aggressive saying that okay today i get an order to deliver 200 laptops i cannot book my sales right away getting an order is not the same as getting the revenue right so unless i have materially given the product to the to the buyer i cannot Uh, cannot consider that as a, a sale getting booked right so prudence is there and then there is a completeness there is an all round uh, data points that are getting captured in the context of reporting standards and that's where financial statements become really really relevant and important in the when they follow gap is because you have an overall picture of the company and not just otherwise some companies would report only data points which are good for them right if my sales are doing good i will only report sales 
that is not allowed you have to give complete information about the company all that is good and all that is bad has to be given and the primary objective we come back to the point that you can compare companies across the same geography if you're using a certain set of generally accepted accounting principles that's the broad premise of what gap means and what the sense of generally accepted accounting principles are right now that still does not solve the problem completely because in today's globalized age right in today's day of globalization a company might be operating in india but might be competing with a company in the us right so for example we know that flipkart and amazon are competitors right now one is an indian company one is a us company how do you compare these two companies if their statements are going to be one is going to be in the indian gap and one is going to be in the us gap because they may not be exactly the same while broadly most of the principles that are that are used in indian and us gap would be similar they may not be 100% same so there might be elements where some companies might appear better in india whereas there might be elements where some companies might appear better in the uh, in the us it is important therefore to adhere to a global set of standards as well which led to the development of what was called as ifrs right so international financial reporting standards this is a global gap in some sense global generally accepted accounting principles and some companies have adopted uh, in it some companies have uh, have not adopted it at this point of time right so essentially uh, the the usage of ifrs is important because when you create a framework for reporting and accounting treatment of various items by global accounting standards you know international accounting standards board or iasb is what has basically come up with this unified accounting practices or uniform accounting practices making financial statements more comparable across geographies right so far we were looking at only comparing statements within india now we are looking at comparing statements between india us uk etc and that is what becomes more important when we look at our uh, overall data point right so for example historically plant and machinery used to get classified as what is called as fixed asset what is plant and machinery basically any factory that is there if you looked at a balance sheet of india about 5 years back it used to be called as fixed asset but when you look at in the us it used to be called as non current asset now they are the same thing but just that if a layman is looking at the statement if you suddenly pick up two statements you might not be sure of what is a fixed asset and what is a non current asset under ifrs all of these get classified as non current asset so if you adhere to ifrs then basically you are going to follow this principle that not only is the principle going to be similar right the basic principle of accounting is going to get similar but also the names or what is called as nomenclature the names will also become similar that is the important part of using what is called as ifrs remember however that accounting fundamentals don't change irrespective of these differences that come up right companies may use ifrs companies may not use ifrs but accounting revolves around six simple concepts assets liabilities income expense inflow and outflow once we master them the rest is easy it's not very difficult right and it's all mathematical so we'll try and kind of understand the mathematical construct of all these things and then try and build on that as we go along in terms of the rules that accounting provides us right uh as we end this particular video a few questions that uh, come to our mind what is the need for accounting explain the meaning of a financial year in india and what is the need of generally accepted accounting principles or gap